What's going on, everybody? Um, I am back for my breakdown of the November 18th Saturday slate. We got seven games tonight, and uh, spoiler alert, it's not really an awesome night. Um, we're going to need some injury news to open some stuff up. Nothing's really jumping off to me outside of don't play the Kings, and I'm, I'm going to have some trouble building the lineup tonight. It's going to be tricky. I've taken a little bit of a look through everything now, but most of this is going to be just uh, stream of consciousness type stuff. So let's start with the Hornets. Uh, 109.25 implied total. Uh, that's fourth on the night, which is kind of surprising to me. On a seven-game slate, I wouldn't expect the Hornets to be putting up the fourth most points, but here we are. Um, so Kemba, I believe, is questionable right now. And I should confirm that. Um, I believe that I just saw that. Not that it's really changing anything that I'm going to be talking about right now, but I want to make sure that I'm spouting the right info. Um, yes, Kemba is questionable, but I'm not super nervous about it. Anyway. I think Kemba's in an okay spot. I think um, I think you could probably talk me into a little bit of MKG, but that's kind of a tricky one. Probably more so on DK than anything else. Four thousand dollars is is pretty cheap. Um, you know, nothing. Again, this is a weird one where like nothing jumps out immediately as amazing. It's just sort of like mid-tier, okay-ish guys. So, one thing I've been doing a lot more lately is taking a look at shot frequency. So this is the shot frequency table um, against. So this is the defensive shot frequency table for the league, courtesy of Cleaning the Glass. So for the Clippers... Um, they give up a lot of mid-range shots, and they give up a pretty good amount of corner threes. So really, it, for guys that are like scoring heavy, you know, if their percentage of points was like 35 or something, it's not as interesting. But for guys that are going to score a lot, I want to see how that sort of balances. It kind of points out guys that might be in a, a decent spot. So I'm going to bring up the Hornets to show you as an example of how they shoot on offense from a frequency perspective compared to Clippers defense. So if I scroll down here to the shooting frequency, and I know this is probably a little tiny on your monitors. Um, it's hard to get it all in there in one look. Actually, I can stretch this out because I don't really care about the percentages so much as I do the frequency. So I could probably bump that up. Nope, bumps them both up. That's annoying. Anyway. So guys that shoot a lot of long mid-range or just mid-range shots in general. And if they shoot corner threes, that's a bonus. So from a long range, mid-range perspective, you know, Jeremy Lamb, he's uh, 83rd percentile in um, oh, the hover stuck. 83rd percentile in long mid-range. 96th percentile for his position in just mid-range shots. So he gets there a lot. Uh, Dwayne Bacon does the same, um, but I don't think that he's really in play from a, a cash perspective. And then from corner threes, you'd be looking at, you know, someone like Marvin Williams or, you know, even, you know, if Monk, Bacon... Uh, Graham. So like Bacon would be a really good look for this game if you thought he was going to get like 26, 27 minutes. Um, but right now I think, you know, using what my projection says and salaries, I think Marvin Williams is probably in play as a, you know, a lower salary wing. Um, but really, there's not, as weird as it sounds, even with their good projected point total, like I don't think that they offensively match up for anything really good. Um, you know, they're good at stopping people from getting to the rim. 
So it, I don't really want any part of like a Cody Zeller or a, or a Dwight Howard. And, you know, they're average at stopping three balls. But if we had anybody in that mid-range game, so like probably Jeremy Lamb is the only guy that I would look at on the guard side. Um, and he doesn't, like, I don't love it or anything, but if he was my last guy in, you know, I could see it. He's not in a horrible spot. But I think Marvin Williams would be sort of the best look from this team. He's not like a short list material guy, but again, like he's good filler for tonight. Um Lamb at Lamb at forty six is pretty good. I don't like him as much at DK for fifty one. Marvin Williams for forty three. That I do like. Um and what you're doing is you're betting on, you know, the shots to fall. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Clippers now. Clippers on the back-to-back -back as well. A um, lot of heavy minutes on their starters. Lou Williams now down from 7,700 last night to 6,800 tonight. His price is just all over the damn place. Um, so just raw numbers wise, we should take a look at Blake and DeAndre for sure. Um, you know, Thornwell's getting the minutes, but they're kind of empty from a stats perspective. You know, you put up 19, 10, 16, like eh. um, And I think Lou Williams is worth a peak now because um, he's certainly not worth it at th at 7,700 on FanDuel. Um, Clippers have 104.75 as implied total, seventh out of the 14 teams tonight. So middle of the pack. So if we take a quick peek at Hornets defense, just so you can understand again, um, Hornets give up a lot of uh, you know long mid-range shots, but they are really bad at defending the three. People get a lot of them up, uh, particularly non-corner threes. So I think that fits some guys on the Clippers pretty well. And I'm not going to do this breakdown for um, for every game, or this video would end up being like an hour and a half. And from what I can tell, the length of these videos matter. And you guys don't want to listen to me for an hour breaking down this stuff need to be quick concise to the point um, so non-corner threes Blake Griffin has shot 284 non-corner threes or 70 sorry um, attempts from the non-corner threes you know it's 25% of those attempts so I like it uh, I think Blake is in a real good spot tonight um, it's tricky because of the back-to-back -back, but you know I'm, I'm fine with it um, I don't want any part of DeAndre. Um, the bulk of his shots are coming at the rim. Uh, Charlotte is really good at defending the rim. So I'm really looking at any guys that shoot like long mid-range jumpers or um, anything in that non-corner three or like any sort of guys that shoot a bunch of threes. Um, Lou Williams is probably pretty sneaky. Like he's, he's in a decent spot. Um, you know, Gallo would have been a really great look if he were playing. Same for Beverly, oddly enough. Um, but I think Blake is a really, really good play for tonight. Um, I'd be surprised if I don't end up having him in my lineup. Magic and Jazz. Uh, Magic have a 107.25 implied points. That's fifth on the night. Um, I think Aaron Gordon's in a real good spot. DJ Augustine should be back. I have him at a pretty low minutes number, just 18. Um, I think Vooch looks pretty good at center. Um, you know, no go bear. So it's going to be a lot more of favors. You know, maybe a couple extra minutes of Ekbe Udo on the, on the second line. But the Jazz are just hurting right now. Like, I assume that Rubio is not going to play. We know go bear is out. You know, Tabo didn't play last night. Um... So if he doesn't play again, that's another guy. Like, those are three really good defensive players. So it makes me really interested in the Magic. 
Um, I don't think the minutes are there for Alfred Payton at that salary, although he could put up something crazy. I think my main focus would be Aaron Gordon and Vooch um, coming off of the Magic. And then for the Jazz, I think most of this is going to look similar to my thought process yesterday. I know when the Jazz news started coming out, you know, people react to that and see, oh, you know, this guy's out, this guy's out, this guy's out, so this guy's value and this guy's value. But the problem with that is, with those guys being out, the team is just worse. So if the Jazz are missing three guys, but their talent level is now the Sacramento Kings, well, those are the type of, like, the Kings are the type of team that we generally avoid. You need guys that are going to get, like, very significant changes in their game for those people being out. So, like, Alec Burks, for example, is a guy that, you know, he's got a pretty, he's got above average usage rate. You know, he gets a lot of his points from scoring, and he had basically all the minutes that he would be able to handle. You know, he's never been a high minute guy. He got 28 minutes last night and put up 25 points on like a very minimal $3,000 salary. He's the guy where I would lo- like, I love him tonight if if these guys are out because at 3,200, there's very little downside. And he's the type of guy that is going to like put up shots in replacement of all of those minutes. Now I am projecting Tabo in for tonight, but the rest of it, um, I'll be focused mostly on Donovan Mitchell. I know a lot of people were on Rodney Hood last night. You know, he got the minutes, but he played like trash. Um, like for Rodney Hood, it doesn't seem like there's much difference between those guys being out or him being in. Like he's not, although he did get the 36 minutes, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, he's worth a look. I think Mitchell and Hood are the Mitchell. Like it's all shooting guards for the Jazz. I think Mitchell, Hood, and Burks are the three places to look tonight from the Jazz, but you only really want one of those guys. They have the 11th highest implied total. It's probably not going to get better than that. Um, so you need to be hopeful that like, you pick the right one, so to speak. I think Hood would be my least favorite guy of the three. I feel still pretty comfortable with Mitchell, just sort of the way that he plays kind of fits taking over the team. And then with Burks, he's, there's just very little downside. Um, and I feel the same way for, for DK. I don't see any real difference. I mean, if you want to get weird in like a GPP, I think how will Neto, um, for minimum salary on DK is like a weird, interesting punt on tonight's slate. Hawks and Celtics. Uh, Hawks have a 98 point implied total at home. It's the second worst compared to the Kings on the road. Uh, The Hawks are not a very good basketball team. However, I, oddly enough, I don't hate Schroeder tonight. Um, it would seem like it's not the best spot with their, you know, crappy implied total and the fact that the Celtics are just good um, and their defense has been really good this year. But it just feels like one of those spots where, like, Shooter can play well and the rest of the team will be not as good. Whatever. Um, DeAndre Bembry is supposed to play tonight, which is kind of surprising. So guys on the wings might see a trim of their minutes. Um, but this isn't a game you're really looking for anybody. If you like Shooter, go for it. Otherwise, um, you don't want Hawks. No one does. Celtics, on the other hand, you know, pretty consistently have a lot of guys you would want. They have a 104.5 implied total, um, which is eighth for the night. A little bit lower than I would have expected. Um, Their salaries on DK aren't really the best. Um, They're more FanDuel plays, but... I think looking at the Celtics would be in the um, Hawks defense would be an interesting exercise right now. So I am going to pull that back up um, just because there are so many options on the Celtics that of guys that actually play minutes. So for the Hawks, uh, they're like a little bit worse than middle of the pack and letting guys get to the rim. They stop everybody from shooting in the mid range, but 
don't stop anybody from shooting threes, which is like really interesting to look at. So it opens up guys, I think like, like Horford is in a really good spot, although he doesn't take as many shots at the rim. Uh, you know, Kyrie looks great. I'm still nervous about like the facial in injury and you know, whether or not he's going to use the mask or not, since I know he hates it more than anything. Um, Terry Rozier would be like a really great pick if he were going to, like if Marcus Smart were hurt, you know, it'd be a great situation of getting those minutes. But really, I think Kyrie is in a real good spot. I think Horford's in a really good spot. Um, and then probably Jalen Brown more so than Tatum. Um, just for how much he gets to the rim and, you know, he takes threes at a little bit higher of a rate, particularly in the corner. Uh, I could see having two Celtics tonight, uh, in some sort of combination, depending on salary. Sixers Warriors, which is, should be probably the chalkiest game of the night. Um, their first and third on uh, the implied points. Sixers have a 110.75 implied point total. Um, and I took a look at them a little bit earlier. Embiid is at $11,000 on FanDuel, which is absolutely bonkers. A dude is... He's insane. He's He's just an insane player. Coming off the 93 and a half point fantasy performance, which I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. That it's so insane to think that he put up 93. I'd give anything to be able to have the screenshot of having him in my lineup, but I had Gasol on that night. Um, he needs 55 to hit 5x. He's playing the best team in basketball. It's a really weird spot. Um, I, he makes me nervous. I understand if you want to roster Embiid. I think that for me, I'm more likely to have either Ben Simmons or Redick tonight. Um, and if I look at prices, you know, Ben Simmons looks fine on DK and Redick is fine on DK as well, especially with the dual eligibility. Um, ben Simmons too, because he can basically transcend positions. You can put him basically anywhere in your lineup. Guard slot, forward slot, utility, point guard, small forward. Um, he allows you to move a lot of stuff around, so value pops up. I think Ben Simmons is like a really good dude to have in your lineup because you can sort of fit him in anywhere. Um, I just think that they're in the best spots tonight. Uh, the Warriors are going to give up more mid-range stuff. You know, they're a smarter defensive team. They're cutting off defense or cutting off threes in general as much as they can. Um, and, you know, as someone who does not shoot well in any way, shape, or form, but got a fun floater game, uh, Ben Simmons lives in the mid-range. So he could be in a real good spot to score. He's going to fill out the box score regardless, or at least he should. So if he's getting the shots that he wants in the middle of the court, uh, I, I can see him putting up a pretty big game. They, they play into his style offensively pretty well. Warriors. The Warriors are just always an exercise in like trying to figure out who's going to hit out of the big guns. Um, when I looked through it a little bit earlier, I landed on liking, you know, Curry and Durant. I don't, I didn't see much for uh, Clay and Draymond. Um, and it's not as if I'm reinventing the wheel, saying like, "Oh, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry here, good." But I, I assume Durant would be dealing with a lot of uh, Bobby Covington. You know, Curry doesn't really have too much to worry about on the the defensive end um, so you know I can see having them both their correlation on fantasy labs if we look into that is as basically neutral so you know no pluses or minuses really for their performances there's no real tie um, 
all of these guys haven't been putting up like crazy fantasy stats. They've they've been relatively balanced. But I think, you know, having a night off, um, heading to Philly, the number one implied total on the night. I like it. Um, I'd expect to have one of the two and potentially two of the two. Two of the two. What? Like both? <laughs> um, I expect to have both if weird value pops up and you can get those salaries in. Um, right now, I'm leaning more towards Curry than Durant just from the savings, um, but I like them both. Grizzlies, Rockets. Uh, I guess I'll look at the Grizzlies, but I think we all know um, what's going on here. I don't need to update this. Um, so, no Mike Conley. He's out for like two weeks or so. Um, I don't love Gasol on DK as much, but... Uh, I loved him on FanDuel Wednesday night when he um, when we found out that Conley was out. Gasol's going to try to do it all, um, and he's at 8,300. He's almost a lock for me at center. Um, it's just his team. I, I mean, if, if it's Mark Gasol and Mario Chalmers, Tyreek Evans, Dylan Brooks, Jermichael Green, I mean, Jesus, he's, it's just he's going to have... He's going to be able to do whatever he wants to do. And the only downside to this entire game is the fact that the Rockets can blow him off the floor. It's They're eight-point favorites um, on the road. The, the Rockets are eight-point favorites on the road. So it could get really ugly for them just because the Grizzlies are so light everywhere. But, I mean, it's... Gasol couldn't really be in a much better spot. And then... If you want to take Mario Chalmers, I get it. More so on FanDuel than DK. If he had, like, dual eligibility, it'd be one thing. Um, he's not, like... He grades out really well, or really poorly, as, like, just a t from a talent perspective. So what you're just betting on is, is minutes and low price, um, which I get. But I can't imagine having wanting to have two Rocket... Or two Grizzlies, you know, with a 10th implied total out of the whole slate. So I think just focus on Gasol, um, piece anything else in if you need to, but that probably wouldn't be a place where I've been looking for two guys from one team. Rockets, on the other hand, love the whole damn squad, I think. Um, love Harden. Uh, I think Capella's in line for a really good night. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Mbamute plays tonight. Um, I think it would be a lot better if he didn't from a fantasy perspective. I'm anxious to see how they work Chris Paul in. 21 minutes um, two nights ago. I've got him at 24 for right now. I don't, I'm not really comfortable with that. What makes me nervous is Eric Gordon's minutes. Um, I think he is in line for a really big game tonight. Um, he would need 30 to hit 5x. Um, he hasn't done it in the past two, but he, you know, he has that ability. He's going to be getting his shots. If he can get 30 minutes, I love Eric Gordon, but I'm really nervous to see what the balance becomes with Chris Paul back and how they handle those rotations. Because it's one thing if you have Paul for full rotation and you can plan that out, but it's a different thing when you need to work Chris Paul in for like 24 minutes. But at the same time, I I would assume they would want him in crunch time if it was close but also not play him too much. So I, I'm not really comfortable with um, D'Antoni's rotations with Paul on short minutes. But ultimately, you know, I think Ryan Anderson deserves a look, especially on DK. Um, I like Capella. I like Paul. I like Harden. I like Gordon. There are a lot of options for the Rockets. They have the second highest implied total at 111. Um, I want to have at least two guys from the Rockets. Uh, especially if we get any news that Mbaa Mute's out. But I, they're just in a really good spot, and the Grizzlies are uh, in trouble. I'm a little nervous about the, the blowout potential, but since it's in Memphis, I'm, I'm a little bit muted to that. Dallas is Dallas. I mean, they're just... Uh, 98.25 implied total. It's the third worst. Um... 
they're like seven point dogs or something at home um i don't know like it's just they're none of these teams are like when there's not injuries and everybody's sort of just priced where they're supposed to be i mean it's really hard to get excited and be like you know who's the play tonight after putting up 12.8 and 7.8 yogi Farrell, go for him but like he's four thousand dollars in salary he's projected to play you know on my end he's projected to play 30 minutes um he's thirty eight hundred dollars on dk like i guess yogi Farrell is in play but nobody jumps off the page for me for dallas um they're just a team that's it's not fun you know they're they're not really playing for this year so it's fun to see dennis smith grow but they're not really like a fantasy location unless people are hurt. Now, Milwaukee. I'm still a little nervous about Milwaukee and just seeing how everything starts to work. Um, but I think they're good. Uh, I think that Bledsoe at 6,600 is a pretty good spot. Um, I mean, Dennis Smith Jr. is not going to be any great shakes on defense, so I can see Bledsoe uh, being in a position to have a big night. He put up 47 in his last game out in 30 minutes. He needs 33 for uh, 5K, um, which I think is, is definitely in play here against Dallas. So I would take a look at a deeper look at Eric Bledsoe. Um, I don't really think you need to hear too much about Giannis. Um, you know, he's just amazing. He's $12,000, which is pretty costly. Um, I'd be surprised if I ended up with Giannis, just because I don't really like that game, but he could just go ham. Um, yeah, like I'd be more likely to have Harden if I was paying up for someone big. And even Ben Simmons at 10-2, I think I might like from a value, like I'd rather have that extra $1,900 somewhere else. So I think Giannis might be a tough fit. The only thing that could bring him like even more into play for me after I start looking at this is I have a lot of trouble picking out small forwards. And I don't think tonight is going to be much different. You know, maybe I'll just ride that Wesley Johnson 50-point fantasy train again. Ridiculous. Um, it's just, it's it's hard for me to, like, I want to pay up for Giannis because I, of how much I hate small forward, but I think that takes me away from guys that I really do think have better nights tonight. It's a tough balance. Um, I should be around at lock tonight. Uh, I'm on the fence a little bit for right now, whether or not I'm going to be home or not. Um, but I would like to be home for a, a live live at lock. So I'll tweet something out uh, at Josh Engelman, um, whether or not I'm going to be doing a live look. I'll probably know in a couple hours. Um, then you'll be able to see exactly if I'm landing on Giannis or not. But he's in a great spot. I just, I don't know if I could fit 12-1 in at small forward. I might just punt across the board at that position. And then the last game, uh, Blazers and Kings. Black, 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 black. It's just ugly. <laughs> Look, I love Dame again tonight. That should not be uh, particularly surprising. Um, I just want to pull them up here for a second or actually it'll be easier to do this so we want blazers so the kings um just give up threes like just a lot uh and you know that obviously fits someone like Dame Lillard, who is 74th percentile for point guards at shooting threes. I'm really surprised that 
uh, CJ McCollum has been so low in like a three point percentage. I'd never like in my mind, I picture him bombing threes a lot, but stats wise, it's, it's a lot of mid range stuff, which is crazy to me. So Sacramento is pretty good at like taking away the mid range and giving up threes. So like, you know, Lillard's taking 82, like 82 percentile or 82nd percentile of point guards for taking non-corner threes and non-corner threes against Sacramento, like the, the worst team in the league. So I love Lillard again tonight. Um, it's right there. I would expect them to want to come out and like get some revenge for last night. So I had him last night. I'd love to have him again, but again, like we're, we're just missing value here. And so much of the good plays look to be the guys that are like seven, eight, nine thousand dollars like the like best value plays. And you obviously can't fit all of that crap in at once. So it's going to be a real big balancing act. We need some dude to come in. Uh, we need like a last night. Well, you know, not that many people were on it. Like we need a Pascal Siakam type news or like an Alec Burks type news. Um, just looking through it now that I've gone through this whole slate. Um, it makes Burks look so much better, particularly if Tabo ends up out. Um, Cause it opens up a lot of money elsewhere. Other than that, for Portland, I mean, I'm not... It's not the best game. Uh, Portland only has the ninth best total for the night. So, it's... I like Dame a lot, and that's pretty much it there. Um, for the Kings, I don't like anybody because they're the Kings. They all play like 25 minutes a game. There's no telling who's going to pop off at any point. You know, Willie Cauley-Stein is probably the best look for the Kings, but... I don't, like it's just you're not supposed to take these dudes. If you're taking more than one of these guys, you're crazy. He's got they've got a 91.25 implied total, which is garbage. They're just like the whole team is just garbage from a fantasy perspective. Like uh, you know, I think De'Aaron Fox is a really fun player. I'm excited to see him grow. I hate Justin Jackson because he went to North Carolina, but like you know, it's cool to see him get minutes. Um. Vince Carter, I think, is supposed to be back, but like, who? You don't want to be in a ten o'clock game, thinking, "Well, I just need uh, Garrett Temple and Costa Kufus to go off, and I could be in the money here." Like, you'll just it makes you want to commit fantasy suicide. You don't want to be cheering for that crap. It's like cheering for an under that you bet on, or you you're cheering against like the fun of the game. Just don't take the Kings. Um, so that's you know that's the gist of the night it's a tricky slate and there's just not a lot of fun out there it's a tough night to build a lineup it's going to take some time some t like major tinkering it's going to be one of those situations where late news is going to be of the utmost importance because if something comes out from like 6.15 to 7 you're going to need to scramble because there are like a couple pretty, to me, a couple pretty obvious options at each position and fitting them all in right now is impossible. So when it breaks, I need to be able to pop that new guy in and drop out whatever I have. Because if that means that I can pull in a Giannis at small forward because something breaks, like the trickle down effect of any news is going to be pretty dramatic. I tried to do a pass at building a lineup already. I would love to show you it, but I couldn't get anywhere. Um, I was having a lot of trouble putting the pieces together. So I, as of this point, I haven't entered any contests. Um, I want to, but I don't. I don't generally ever enter contests until I can at least put a placeholder lineup in there that makes some sense to me. And for right now, I don't have that. Um, but I'm going to grind away at it tonight. Um, I got a haircut in a couple hours, so. If you if you see a tweet from me or anything on the, the Reddit DFS saying that I'm going to do a live look, you can check out my fresh cut. It'll look uh, pretty much just like every other haircut I get because I'm a plain dude. <laughs> but that's it. I'm just rambling now, I'm making this video go on longer than it needs to. That's it for me. Uh, please like this video. Um, that's a huge help for me in you know, climbing up YouTube rankings, subscribe if you can, share it if you want, uh, you know, send it to grandma and tell her to subscribe on YouTube. Um, the more that I can get these subscribers, 
the faster I can get to a thousand, which would be, you know, which is where I need to be <clears throat> to try to monetize these things. Um, but that's where I'm at. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Reddit, pretty much anywhere. Um, I'm going to be around. Um, if you want to hit me up, if you're coming from uh, the DFS Reddit and you use the, the Discord channel, I'm a member of that Discord channel. You can message me. You can probably ever message me on there um, and I'll see it. But until then, um, you'll either hear from me tonight at a live video or tomorrow morning um, for a recap. So have a good Saturday.